so welcome to this class on neuroscience of human movement this is part 15 of our discussion on uh, primary motor cortex and this is uh, the last lecture on this topic this is also part 2 of the summary on uh, primary motor cortex so we have discussed the various works in uh, primary motor cortex what we also discussed was uh, lesions and uh, brain machine interfaces in the previous classes. So, I am going to summarize that in today's class. We discussed uh, the case of lesions, how different uh, animals behave post lesion. So, and how much time is uh, taken by different animals to recover from lesion. Rodents take a few hours we said that and cats and dogs hours to days and primates uh, as in macaques uh, days and uh, great apes days to weeks and in humans this may be several weeks to several months and uh, as you go in this direction and in this direction for example, the potential for recovery reduces and uh, the time for uh, recovery increases and also it seems that there is a critical period uh, during which motor training must be imparted to people who have had a lesion. A question is uh, what is this critical period, is this critical period the same? Uh, these are open uh, questions in research, people are still trying to understand what this is. This is must obviously be related to the size of the lesion, to the location of the lesion, to the person's previous experiences, to the actual uh, specific case. So, it is a very unique thing because it turns out as we discussed in the previous class there is this duality between brain structure and brain function, how we perceive the world at a particular point in time is determined by your brain. But uh, so that means if I am seeing this, if I am seeing this uh, class of students, if I am seeing the camera that is determined by my brain and how I perceive that. But the experiences also change my brain not just functionally, not just notionally actually there is a structural change within the brain. So, this leads to a situation where each brain is different and the response of each brain to injury will also be different. Uh, this is not an excuse that we are giving, this is a fact. Uh, we will have to find solutions despite this truth. So, there must be complete acceptance of this truth that there is going to be a requirement to deliver patient specific therapy. Then with that uh, fact accepted, then therapy is expected to be more uh, effective for patients. So, uh, open question as to what kind of therapy is useful. Several questions are open. So, I hope there is going to be more questions that come at the end of this uh, course than answers. I hope that is uh, the that is achieved. What we also saw was a pyramidal uh, tract and uh, there are several descending pathways the cortico spinal pathway and the cortico bulbar pathway etcetera. And uh, so, the pyramidal uh, tract is shown in red here. Uh, just going through the internal capsule and here and it is zoomed out here. So, this is where the decussation happens right. So, or crossing over of about 90 percent of the neurons to the contralateral side which means that there are 10 percent of the neurons that project either uh, ipsilaterally or bilaterally right about 80 to 90 percent of these neurons cross over to the other side in that area. So, that is called as a pyramidal uh, decussation and we said that uh, transecting this or injuries to the pyramidal tract cause uh, typical symptoms that have come to be called collectively as pyramidal syndrome. We said that this is a misnomer several uh, other problems also cause similar symptoms we said this we discussed this in detail in the previous classes ok. And we also said uh, there are upper motor neurons are the cortico motor neurons in M1 and then there are the lower motor neurons in the spinal cord we call this as the alpha mo motor neuron and the alpha motor neuron muscle pathway is called as a final common pathway please find out who said this. Um, this is the final common pathway and uh, some neurons alpha motor neurons they receive direct uh, M1 projections or monosynaptic M1 projections. So, and there are others that receive uh, inputs through interneurons, there are others that receive inputs through 
you know through an interneuron and to uh, some other alpha motor neuron etc right to more proximal parts of the body and we said what lesions to these two are upper and lower motor neurons can do fundamental differences in mechanisms right when the lower motor neurons are injured there is actually denervation right because of this there is going to be atrophy there is going to be flaccidity there is going to be weakness when the upper motor neurons are uh, injured the descending inputs from the m1 region are lost the influence of this descending input is quite complicated but at least the what it does to the system is that it uh, in, it results in an increase of tone or hypertonia actually this hypertonia is preceded by a hypotonia and an increase in the reflexes brisk and heightened reflexes right we said this brisk and heightened deep reflexes or hyperreflexia and spasticity so what are the classic signs of the upper motor neuronal syndrome there are three classic signs spasticity what is spasticity rate dependent rigidity so a rigidity is felt if uh, load is applied very fast if the same load is applied relatively slowly the rigidity is not felt or uh, relatively small right so this is spasticity this is different uniquely different from the general rigidity found in other uh, problems okay what's the other uh, sign classical sign babinski sign what does this refer to or uh, babinski reflex or uh, babinski sign what does this refer to this refers to the case where uh, the fanning of toes is observed when a blunt object is used against the foot suppose this is the foot this is the hand actually but assume that this is the foot of an adult right and you are using a blunt object to perturb like that perform this movement this in a healthy adult will cause flexion of the toes suppose these are toes assume that the fingers are toes this will cause flexion of the toes including the great toe right but in um, in a person who has had upper motor neuronal lesion this uh, stimulus will cause fanning of toes with an extension of the great toe this is called as babinski sign such a sign is considered normal in infants but abnormal in adults so classic uh, sign what is the third problem loss of fine movements we said this earlier these are the classical problems that come with uh, upper motor neural relations and lower motor neural relations you have flaccidity uh, denervation atrophy and uh, hypotonia whereas in uh, upper motor neural relations you have uh, hypertonia you have hyperreflexia and babinski sign and spasticity not flaccidity spasticity and in depending on the lesion there is going to be a graded response there can be either paresis or plegia paresis refers to weakness uh, whereas uh, plegia refers to paralysis so this also we discussed we discussed in detail the differences between the two cases i have just presented some points here just to remind you for this so the attempt here is to summarize the situation right and then we discussed the case of brain machine interfaces uh, how to record from uh, live behaving uh, animals hopefully this technology will improve sufficiently enough for it to be implemented in humans what are the challenges that lie before us that that stand between us and the actual implementation of this in humans many too many actually to discuss so that is good and bad simultaneously it's good because it provides us an opportunity to solve this problem in a way that's good uh, it's bad because uh, well we still don't have solution to the problem so that's bad despite so much technical progress um uh, commercially viable a uh, a relatively affordable brain machine interface that's uh, that can be used that's scalable and sustainable are uh, still eluding us despite substantial progress in this field so uh, what's uh, what are the main components of data acquisition from the brain and uh, computation and then that is given to a machine which is a robot uh, arm and gripper which is controlled right so this must happen the key word is real time like it would happen in a live human being 
that means great challenges in computation, great challenges in instrumentation, right. So, the opportunity is there, so the window of opportunity is there for all of us to contribute. How many of us are willing to take up that opportunity? Billion dollar question. So, in summary, the question is what is the scope of rehabilitation in uh, humans? To what extent can we rehabilitate? Well, the hope is that we can rehabilitate to begin with. Two is that what are the appropriate approaches of rehabilitation? That remains the question. One is rehab approaches or therapy, physical therapy. Two is devices. Both of these need to improve and catch up with uh, the problem. In the United States, three quarters of a million people are affected by stroke every year. In India, it is about 1.2 million people every year. So, 12 lakh individuals every year and 750,000 individuals every year in the US, 12 lakh individuals are in uh, India. How many of these people are going to be helped by us and uh, by our innovations? Questions are open, there are uh, many problems, there are many solutions. I leave you with questions than answers. Um, hopefully, there will be some of us who will contribute to change this world. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.